Epilepsy affects nearly 3 million people in the United States and 40 to 50 million people worldwide. The athlete you're watching is Jason Snelling. He's a running back for the Atlanta Falcons and he has epilepsy. I developed epilepsy at a late age. I think kids feel like they can relate more with me. I relate to a lot of things they had to go through, like not being able to drive, you know, being a teenager and not being able to do the things that usually you just take for granted. Epilepsy is a very common condition. It occurs approximately one and a half percent of the population has epilepsy. It basically refers when you have had two or more unprovoked seizures, then you have epilepsy. The Epilepsy Foundation of Georgia is a key component of management of epilepsy in the state. They offer a tremendous amount of community service. They help patients with medications. They offer all sorts of support services for education, employment. I've been working with the Epilepsy Foundation going on five years now. When I came to Atlanta, I linked up with some people with the Epilepsy Foundation of Georgia. It just was kind of food to my soul, uh, doing the things that I was able to do. And after that, you know, it just it catapulted from there. Today I'm here visiting uh, kids that share the same condition as I do as epilepsy and I'm just kind of sharing the day with them, you know, with the other kids who are here just visiting. It's just a great opportunity to share my story with, you know, kids in the hospital going through their trials and tribulations as I did. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. One of the things about being an adolescent is you don't want to be different. You want to be exactly like your friends. And with having seizures, you could have a seizure at any time. It could be in school. Now you're different. You could be embarrassed. How do you live with that? And for children to have a role model is particularly important. So whenever they see somebody who has been successful in career and still has the condition, it's, it has a tremendous positive impact on the child and on the family. It's powerful to people. And in some ways, I think sometimes I was, you know, placed in that situation to help others and show them that, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Partway through Jason's conversation of just telling his story, we had a young lady kind of very shyly raise her hand. And her question to him was, how did you make friends? Knowing you have seizures, how did you make friends? So he told her. And she was just so excited afterwards. She was telling her mom and telling us that she was going to leave and go try that the next day at school. Hey. Hi, nice, nice to meet, to meet you, Jamie. You. you play football? I do, buddy. <laughs> Nolan. You like football? Yeah? I can dread the ball. I always fly and make it something I catch it. You can? You're a quarterback. Hey, Nolan, I got something for you. What do you say? This is for you. What is it? It's a bear. You like bears? That one's for you. When you have seizures, you cannot drive. So if you've had a seizure, you cannot drive six months to a year. You have to be seizure free that long. There was a guy, he was about 17 years old. His question was, did you ever get to drive? Because that's so important to 17 year olds. And Jason said, absolutely, I could drive. Lost it. Got it back, drove again. Lost it. Got it back and drove again. That meant more to that kid because he knows he's going to be able to get his driver's license one day and he's going to be able to Hello. be like the rest of the kids. How are you doing? Hi. What's your name? Kai. Kai, nice to meet you. I'm Jason. I have something for you. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. How you feeling today, Kai? Good. Good? We're going to get better because you got to keep believing that. Well, me, I have, uh, I had grand mild seizures. Actually, my seizures are have been controlled now. At one point I would have them multiple times a day, but uh, I've gotten better now. Well, that's good. Rise up. I had a lot of struggles with it. You know, I didn't want to take my medicine all the time. I had a problem, you know, sticking to just taking it. Sometimes it was because I forgot, and sometimes it was just having a feeling of I didn't want something like this control in my life, so I would rebel against it. Although it was, you know, it would cause me to have seizures, I just felt in more control of my life. And, you know, it's hard to rationalize that, especially as a kid, and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people didn't understand that. I mean, I just tell them to uh, surround themselves with the right support group uh, and just be honest with their condition. Talk about it, explain what you have to people, let them know what it is, 
I feel like if they're honest about that, a lot of people would be responding in more of a positive way. They would want to know more about it. And uh, the people that don't get it, you know, you know, you probably don't want to be around them anyway. So just really just surround themselves with the right support people, people that can be there for you when you're dealing with those hard times of epilepsy. We always welcome donations. Uh, the donations are extremely helpful for a variety of reasons. It can be a direct donation earmarked towards medication management so people can get funding for medications if they cannot afford it. It is through donors that we've been able to make sure we have the latest equipment here to help diagnose the kids and then also do the surgery and we have outstanding outcomes with the number of children that we've been able to cure. I always encourage people to you know, donate you know, their time and their money to you know, the research of epilepsy. First hand I'm seeing how it's changing you know, thousands of uh, kids' lives every day. If I didn't have the support and the donations that people gave to some of the organizations that I was part of, you know, I don't know if I'd be doing what I was doing. So I encourage everybody just to give back and just try to help the cause. Some of the uh, big events that I've done, uh, well, here in Georgia, I've done the Taste of Love, which is a gala that raises money for epilepsy here in Atlanta. I also ran in a Magnolia Run, which is just a run uh, and walk that we do every year here uh, that raises money for different things in the epilepsy community. The national level, which I do with the uh, National Epilepsy, they have their National Epilepsy Walk, and I participate that every year. And uh, that raises thousands of dollars, uh, you know, worldwide. You know, it's been an uphill battle for me, you know, off and on in my life, you know, different obstacles and adversities that I had to go through, you know, dealing with seizures and epilepsy. But, you know, I'm a living example and testament, you know, with, you know, faith first and, you know, with the right doctors and the help and the support group, you know, that I had that you can go on and do great things. And I'm living a dream with a condition that most people would never believe, but I'm doing and I'm a living example. Jason Snelling is more than a role model to people with epilepsy. He's an inspiration. Get inspired every Sunday and watch this man score touchdowns. To find out more about epilepsy, visit the Epilepsy Foundation of Georgia. Here you'll find out how to volunteer and donate your time.